everything without offending. So now my mouth is in the jailhouse with cases pending. First Amendment, you replaced it, rigged it, dubbed it down. It's not an option. Some of it I understand. Take the power from me. This chipset is definitely going to be worth considering. So if you're in the market for a phone, it's a good time. Uh, in North America, United States, you're probably looking at something like a Samsung Galaxy to start the year. Not cheap phones. You're going to be spending some money, but you will be getting the best in cellular. Uh, let's actually go to the spec sheet from the Qualcomm Snapdragon X70 modem RF system. All right. So frequency ranges in 5G, it's going to be compatible enabled with support for 600 megahertz dish and t-mobile have that i think us cellular does too i think comcast has 600 megahertz as well uh, 41 gigahertz that puts you in the millimeter wave microwave i think there's aren't there some carriers that have like 47 gigahertz licenses that's still not included so that we're at least another year out for that and i think that's dish and t-mobile actually so that's disappointing uh, so you won't be seeing phones connecting to those bands at least until 2024. And that's not a guarantee either, apparently. Uh, here's something big for you. Four carrier aggregation on the downlink for 5G. Two uplink carrier aggregation in FDD and TDD modes. So that's going to be important to N77 or Verizon. Uh, that's also going to be important for N77, for T-Mobile, and AT&T. All right, so um, that's going to be pretty big. Uh, you guys are going to start seeing some pretty tremendous uplink from T-Mobile and Verizon. And hopefully it helps AT&T too, but those two are way ahead in these types of things. Uh, also, I I'm expecting N48 to become a player in this. All right, so we'll see that launch from Verizon, and that'll be a difference maker. Who knows? Maybe T-Mobile does something with it. I know they got some licenses. Dish should be doing something with N48 as well. I don't know if their radios are doing it, though, so they might have to put up some secondary radios. Pixel has the 2X uplink carrier egg. I know it does. It's got a nice chain for the uplink. Uh, millimeter wave sub-6 aggregation, so there it is. Verizon millimeter wave plus Verizon C-band. Nice. You might see T-Mobile experiment with this as well. All right. And AT&T. Because they all do a little millimeter wave. Verizon does more, obviously. Uh, bandwidth aggregation increase attainable speeds. Uh, it says here optimizations. AI-powered optimizations for sub-6 gigahertz and millimeter wave links. For improved speeds, coverage, mobility, and link robustness. Multiple antennas to extend battery life. That sounds like a plan to me. Looks like they are really serious about addressing the inefficiencies in the battery life problems with 5G modems. I gotta tell you guys, I'm pretty happy about this. This sounds promising. Anything else we need to know about the X70? Operators can minimize latency. Alright, that's probably gonna be through standalone service, so like T-Mobile. Verizon AT&T start launching standalone 5G. The X70 will be able to really flex. Uh, it says here the architecture is up to the release 16 expansion. All right, so that's good. 10 gigabit per second peak download speeds. 3.5 gigabit per second peak upload speed. Yeah, I don't think any carrier is going to be doing this. What do you guys think? You think we're going to get like one gigabit per second uplink this generation? Let's start there. <laughs> you know it's going to be millimeter wave. And with and latency, obviously. And oh, and there's one more thing about the millimeter wave. I'm hearing that the millimeter wave can finally go standalone. That's what I hear. All right. I think it says it right here, actually. All right, so here's the Qualcomm 5G AI suite. I, I linked this in the show notes so you guys can check it out yourself. RHEL 16 support, 60% improved power efficiency. All right, we really needed that. The 5G modems have been a nightmare. Ultra low latency suite. All right, we'll see how that turns out. We need carriers to launch a standalone network. Then we can start talking about low latency. We need to get under 10 milliseconds for me to be impressed. Like, 
on average, you know, eight, nine, 10 milliseconds. All right, uh, 5G millimeter wave and sub six aggregation. So for Verizon, that's gonna be N77 plus N260 or N261. Uh, throw in the N48 as well. Uh, they've got like N5 in some places, N2, N66. You know, they got stuff like that. 5G millimeter wave standalone. Finally. Because <laughs> we want to see uplink and millimeter wave become, you know, really robust. You know, 400 megahertz of spectrum on uplink. I mean, what are we going to see? We're going to finally see gigabit speed uplink. That'd be nice. Uh, the dual SIM, dual active with millimeter wave support. Millimeter wave multi-SIM. Comprehensive 4 carrier aggregation and 5G across FDD and TDD. So that's good for all things 5G. Switched uplink. That's FDD to TDD switching in SA mode. Because the last conversation I had with Zero Cool, we were discussing FDD and TDD problems with uplink. This is going to be huge. For those of you that have been having trouble with N41, this could be potentially game-changing for you. Like me, I've been having problems with uh, with N41 uplink. In fact, it's been better for me switching down to N71 for uplink. So th this is a welcome tool right here, the switched uplink. And hopefully, like, the networks are smart enough to where it, it does all the switching, you know, on its own, uh, you know, everything being software defined probably is going to be a huge boost. Uh, what else we got here? The power saving, all that stuff is in there. Signal boost, antenna tuning, that should be cool. That should help out coverage, edge cell connectivity, voice over NR support. So you're going to get 5G voice calls. Anything else here we need to know about? There's the 10 gigabit per second download speed, 3.5 gig uplink speed. Uh, wideband envelope tracking there's all the aggregation stuff all right they do have band 46 i wonder if that's going to go 5g dynamic spectrum sharing we've had that for a while still does support cdma why i have no idea <laughs> lte is there cbrs is there uh gsm is there so you guys can take this phone these phones overseas because they still use a lot of this stuff the multi-SIM setup looks good. Oh, wow. Eight carrier millimeter wave. I think we have that now. 800 megahertz bandwidth millimeter wave. I think we have that now. 300 megahertz bandwidth in sub six. So let me get this straight. Since you're gonna be able to aggregate four carriers, right? On 5G. That means you could do two channels of millimeter wave and you could do two channels of midband so technically Verizon could do 800 megahertz of N260 200 more megahertz of N260 because I think they have a thousand megahertz here and then they could do 100 megahertz of N77 plus another 40 megahertz of N77 or they could do 40 megahertz of N48 holy crap and then we could turn this around for t-mobile too right they've got like a thousand megahertz of of n260 or something or 261 i forget whatever it is uh 258 they got all types of frequencies so they could do their 800 megahertz plus an additional 200 megahertz plus 100 megahertz n41 plus an additional 60 megahertz n41 <laughs> you could just you know uh <laughs> if you wanted to and if you don't have millimeter wave then it's going to be 100 megahertz of n41 60 megahertz of n41 and then i don't know they're running 20 megahertz of n25 and then probably 10 15 megahertz 20 megahertz of n71 finally carry your aggregation in the 5g bands standalone networking here we come all right are you guys excited about this modem snapdragon x70 5g modem are you excited about this chipset?